Haleluya. 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 You can go ahead and sit down. I'm going to jump right in it. Uh, just discuss a couple of things about this day. Today is, as we know it, a special day around the whole world. And that's the Sabbath, the Shabbat. Not Christmas. It's the Shabbat. This is a special day around the whole world. The whole world is supposed to be reverencing this day. The creator himself lets you know in his word that we have one duty. And that's to fear him and keep his commandments. And smack dab in the middle of the commandments, he tells us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. But the thing is, our people don't keep it holy. The world don't keep it holy. The wicked sure don't keep it holy. And that's the way, like the creator let us know, that's the way we liked it. So he gave it to us. You know, we went after our forefathers, went after other deities. You know, they walked after them. They loved the wickedness. They wanted to hear the things that pleased their heart. So in the end result, he gave all of that to us. He kicked, out the, kicked us out the land and said, go for it. Worship other gods. But I just want to bring to, uh, just talk about the situation that's going on today. A lot of the world is <clears throat> under uh, a lie that the creator is part of a trinity of three individual situation and they believe that part of that trinity impregnated, impregnated another man's uh, wife had a son which somehow became the creators and he died for everybody's sins in the world now all those who know the law we know that every man dies for his own sin but for those out there watching via the web, this is mostly going to be for you because a lot of us, we came into the law, we followed the law, and some of these things, actually a lot of these things, most of these things, 99%, I would say, is bread and butter for us. But this is to you, whether you hear it or you forbear it, it is the word of Yahweh. Not the word of Paul, not the word of Mark, not the word of any of those liars. I'm gonna pull up my phone. This is what I tend to use quite a bit. I, um, I use actual Bibles, but it seems that my phone, I have, uh, it's like online Bible where I can pull up stuff a lot faster. I can you know do a lot more with it. So what basically, I'm gonna give you this situation. This is what the world is doing today. A lot of us who are supposed to be, a lot of us which are Israel, we are supposed to be an example to the world. We are supposed to be showing the laws of Yahweh to the world to show his greatness to the world and his mercy. But instead, we follow after the heathens. Everything that they do, we want to do. That's exactly where we are now because we wanted to be like the heathen, the heathen. That's why Yahweh said, okay, go for it. You're out of the land. Somebody else is going to move in the land and you're going to eat all the pig you want. You know, you can worship all the deities you want. But instead of us serving a creator who is righteous and just, we do everything against him. We are taught to do everything against him. Our fathers have taught us and their fathers have taught us. However, there were still some who kept the law, who still taught the law. Because if not, we would be destroyed. Now, I look at it this way. Today is a day that people, they dedicate to supposedly that deity of theirs who died for three days, came back to life, et cetera, whatever the case is, and today's his birthday. But they really don't understand that that goes way back before him. And it's all based around sun worship and the rotation of the sun around the world. But when you tell our people these things, they don't want to hear it. Israel is hard headed. Yeah. If you tell the word, and this is something I've experienced, when you tell the word to any of the other nations, they drop their ears and they listen. You know, I was talking to one guy at my job, he's, you know, young kid, you know, and uh, I, I, I told him uh, basically a lot of the world, they have no idea that the creator has a name. And the first words that was, well, the first word out of his mouth was Yahweh. And I looked at him like, 
Wow, you know, this little 21 year old kid, the first word out of his mouth is Yahweh. But I've been talking to, you know, Israelites over here and they don't want to hear it. They want to keep telling me that somebody else, a man who was born and sinned his whole life in blasphemy. And, you know, this is the true Elohim incarnate in flesh, whatever the case may be, you know. But in doing this, what they do like today, and I'm going to say this a certain way, because those who understand the law, you will see how much we hate the creator. And I say we hate the creator because in our actions, we speak with either love or hate. When we keep his law, we show him love. That is how we contend with evil. But when you don't, you wake up, like many of us today, on his holy day, his Shabbat day, you wake up, you go ahead and you cook you some, some abominable foods, you let your kids that you've been lying to all year about someone who comes down to the chimney and gives them gifts go to a tree that you brought into the house and bow to that tree in order to reserve, you know, receive gifts. When I look at it, like a lot of people say that uh, in Jeremiah chapter 10, uh, I think it's verse 3, is about a uh, Christmas tree. I think it's mo it's. It has a lot more to do with just Christmas trees because as you continue reading it, it gives you details of an idol. You know, it says it can't move. You shouldn't fear it. You know, so putting that together, when I really think about it, you look at that Christmas tree because that's what you're doing. You're bowing down to that tree in order to receive a gift. Now, what do they put at the top of that tree? This is what I look at because some people can say, hey, this was uh, the Nimrod situation back then, but right now when i look at what you're bowing to you're bowing to a tree and at the very top of that tree is what a star so i'm gonna put this i'm gonna pull this up real quick you're bound to a tree on whose birthday do they say it is their savior they say that it's the savior's birthday even though we know this is the point where uh all the deities before him who were born of virgins, did miracles, died for three days, resurrected. It's all the same. Same story, as they say, different suit. Uh, sorry, same suit, different bow. Uh, Elder Abia, you have something you want to say? Yes. Uh, our praise, our glory, our Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, our praise, glory, and honor goes to the Holy One of Israel, whose name alone is Yahweh, by saying hallelujah. 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 I just want to give a testimony. I had a uh, text my grandson, he's a uh, I don't know what he's doing now. He moved to Florida, so I, I don't too much know what he's doing. But I texted him. I was like, uh, I hope you ain't got no Christmas tree in your house. And uh, because he's been here before, you know, he tried to act like he, you know, listening to me and, you know, trying to keep up a little bit. He act like it. And so I said, I hope you ain't got no Christmas tree in your house. So he didn't say anything. So along with that, I put you know, Jeremiah uh, 10, 10, 10 and 2, right? So uh, I guess he read it. So he texted me back and told me, well, it ain't a live tree. I said, dead or alive, you wrong. You know, so uh, he just, I guess that's what he got out of it. You know, that it, it meant a live tree, but a, uh, an artificial tree is okay. So, hallelujah. I tried to tell him after he, you know, told me that, but I just wanted to tell him, uh, testimony, give a testimony on that, hallelujah. Huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elder. Regardless, whether it was alive or if it was made from plastic, exactly, it is wickedness. Now, this is what they put at the top of the tree. When you look at it, it's not a regular star. So this is where I think it comes from. If you, if you go, and you don't even have to go. I'm just going to read this because this is a, the book of lies. It says, this deity says, I have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. This is where the lies are spread. I am the root and offspring of David, which is also another lie because they said this so-called ghost impregnated his mother. And the bright and morning star. So I believe that is what they put at the top of that tree. And when you go down on this supposedly birth, you know, deity's birthday, you're bowing to him. They put that star at the top of the tree to represent him. 
you know, but the truth is, if you decide to believe that and you ignore everything that Yahweh says, then all this is going to testify against you on the day of judgment. Because right now, regardless of what Matthew, Mark, Paul, and all those individuals said to you, I am going to tell you what Yahweh says, which is the biggest difference. You read his book. It says, seek ye out of the book of Yah. It doesn't say seek it out of the book of Paul. Or should I say the letters of Paul? It makes no sense. You trust in man. Cursed is the man that trusts in man. And what can these individuals tell you when none of them have even spoken to nor seen Yahweh? I'm going to pull this up real quick. Give me one second. And I'm going to tell you what the scriptures I'm going to read basically is the scriptures that Yahweh used to wake me up. You know, to break away from all of that. Because, yeah, that's true. Yahweh did begot a son in a male form. Yahweh will give us one who will be our one king over us under him. And Yahweh will raise him up. But it's not the individual that our people are celebrating today. All righty. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to start with uh, Ezekiel 37, 21. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read. <clears throat> and say unto them, thus saith Yahweh Elohim. And that right there, as Maury Elisha said many of times, you will not find this in the New Testament. You may find, and the voice said, and then it talks about Yahweh in third person, call nothing uncommon that Elohim has made that is not and when you know his voice Yahweh says his sheep know his voice and when you know his voice because you're his sheep you know that's not Yahweh speaking but continuing it says behold I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their land now a lot of you watching you've probably come into the realization that we, the descendants of slaves, are the true children of Israel. And we have been scattered, as they say, as the book tells us, uh, upon the four corners of the world. And when the four corners would be the north, south, east, and west. This is where we're scattered in the lands of our enemy. This is not our land, this is not our language, but this is where he scattered us because we chose to rebel against him. Our fathers chose to rebel and they taught us to rebel. But we thank Yahweh for giving us the light and showing us the truth so that we can break away. Now, <clears throat> and it says, uh, verse 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall no more be two nations, neither shall they be divided unto two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their Elohim. And this is Yahweh speaking. This is not a man. And David, David, there is no other name here except David, my servant, shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd. One, not two, not three, like the New Testament teaches, but one. If this is the one shepherd, how can there be another one? There are Israelites who actually take this scripture and they say, but still, there are, there's another individual who's going to be with him. But yet the creator says one. I think if he meant more than one, he would have said more than one. But he says one. 
and David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. Now, keep in mind, these are the things that the New Testament, which I call the book of lies, tells you are done away with. They tell you that we don't have to do all these things anymore, and that's the problem. Our people love that. That is why we continue to transgress against him. When you tell our people the truth, when you read this to them, they, they're so quick to turn a deaf ear because they, this teaching has been so ingrained in them that somebody died for their sins. Now they are delivered to do these things, these abominations. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, and for those of you watching via the internet, Jacob is us, the house of Israel, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children. Now, this next word, I'm, I got to see, is this right? It says forever. OK, now I, I'm kind of thinking and I feel with all my heart that Yahweh don't make mistakes when he speaks. So I'm going to say that when he said forever, that he meant forever. So when this happens, this is a forever thing. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Wow, what do you know? He said it again, forever, David. Okay, and this is one of the things that woke me up. I realized that, wait a minute, I thought there was only one. There was one as they say, mediator between us and the creator, Yahweh. But right here, he's telling us that David is going to be his, you know, his king over us. So I continue to read. And I continue to go on and find more scriptures. And these scriptures, scriptures that many of us know, but a lot of you watching may not be privy to. But today, you have the knowledge because these are the words of Yahweh, which you should always hold over the words of any man. Number 26, moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place in them, I will place them and multiply them. And I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. That's going to be a beautiful thing because he's saying in the midst of us. It's not like the New Testament is saying where, you know, he's going to go away to a place in, in the sky and he's going to it's going to have many mansions, the New Jerusalem. It's going to, you know, all this. He's telling us he's going to dwell in the midst of us in our land, which we are not in at the moment. Now I'm going to go to Psalms as well. The creator talking about his one son in man form. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. I'm oh, sorry. It's Psalms 2 and 4. Sorry about that. All right, I'll begin reading. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said, Yahweh have said unto me, thou art my son this day. Have I begotten thee? Now, wait a second. The New Testament said that someone else was his only begotten son. But reading right here, I declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. I mean, that's as clear as day. Yahweh said, you're my son. I have begotten you this day. Nothing about someone else in the New Testament, which is what all of our people are praising and worshiping and eating all their oysters and shrimp and pigs today and, you know, committing all these sins, you know, but yet they say they love him. But if they truly love him, then they will seek after him and in seeking after him, they would find him. 
Oops, give me one second, I just lost my area. Okay, I'm gonna jump to um, Hosea three and four. That's two witnesses right there. I'm gonna give you a third witness. In Hosea chapter three, verse four, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim. That's exactly the way we are right now. We don't have an image. You have a lot of us Israelites going out here and they're, they're, they're doing uh lion pictures and you know making their own type of flags and even the 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 jewish man you know they have their flag but in the end those are all images and what do we have we don't even have in in society this society we don't even have a country they just say that we come from a continent that's it and our name is constantly changing so right here this is telling you facts we don't have any of this we don't have a sacrifice even though the New Testament tells you you've had a sacrifice for the longest. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahweh their Elohim and David their king and shall fear Yahweh in his goodness in a latter day. Now there it is again. Yahweh is saying David will be our king under him. And it also says in the latter days which means the last days. This is not something that happened years ago, just before the New Testament was written. Now let's go to Numbers 24, 17. I'll begin reading. I shall see him but not now, I shall behold him. One second. Okay, this one's a little too deep. I'm gonna save this one here. But I'll, I'll go ahead and read it anyway. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of this deity. Now I don't, I don't really wanna to get too far into that one, so I'm gonna to jump to the next one because that's gonna to have to go into detail. But I'm gonna to go to Jeremiah. I put all, quite a bit of this up this morning. I wasn't planning on speaking, but um, I'm gonna to jump to Jeremiah real quick. Um, one second. I'm going to go to uh, chapter 30, verse 7. Now, so far, everything that we have been reading from Yahweh's book has been telling us that he has a king in his mind who will reign over us forever which will come to us in the last days. This is who he will raise up. And, it, and he gives you the name David. He's very specific. He says David. Now 37, I'm sorry, 30 and seven. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, for he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off his neck and will burst his bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. David is dead. David is dead. And he is going to raise David up to us. We don't know. We can't say how he's going to do it. He may, make, he may decide to put flesh on his bones. 
He may decide to, you know, bring him back through the womb. We don't know. But we do know that his word says he will raise him up to us. Not that I will raise up a descendant of David. Give me one second. I lost my place. Therefore, fear not. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their king, who I will raise up to them. Therefore, fear not, O servant Jacob, saith Yahweh. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And for those of you probably tuning in that are just learning that we are the children of the Most High, this is where we are. This is captivity. We, we just didn't end up in another land just because we migrated. This is our punishment. Therefore, fear not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations. And that's how you know this hasn't happened yet, because all the nations are going to be gone. Though I make a full end of all the nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee together all unpunished. And that's one thing that our people who have come into the knowledge, they fail to realize, which is they think that when Yahweh returns, that we are just going to get recognition and go to our land. You know, but the truth is when he returns, what we can hope for is that he will hide us in that day because it is a day of anger. It is a day of wrath. And he tells us he will bring us out into the wilderness where he will plead with us. And plead does not mean he's going to beg us to return to his law. That means he's going to sift us. He's going to separate those who are wicked from those who are righteous. It is a day that a lot of people, they say that they're looking forward to, but they really don't understand how bad that day is going to be. There's even a plague, you know, not to get too far off, but Yahweh even talks about a plague that he will put on man and animal where our flesh will rot as we stand. Our eyes will rot in our sockets. Our tongues will rot in our mouths. And we will attack each other. We will attack our sons. We'll eat the flesh. Like this is, this is a lot, you know, a lot of people aren't ready for it. They say, I can't wait for, you to go, you know, for me to go home. It's one thing my mom said. She, you know, like, I can't wait for us to go home. I'm like, there's a lot going on. Not everybody's promised to go home. And Yahweh tells you, like, there's only a remnant of, there's many of us, there's many of us but there's only a small few that's going to make it back home. So best thing to do is follow Yahweh. Fear him. Keep his laws. It's, it's as simple as that. I'm going to jump to uh, some Psalms. I'd like to see what uh, David has to say about it. Because there's a few more I can read. There's more scriptures I have written down from Yahweh himself telling you that this is our king. Under him, of course. But let's see what David has to say. I'm going to go to, let's try, uh, let's go to Psalms 71, verse 20. All right, I'm going to start reading. This is, <clears throat> and this is David. Thou, which has showed me great and sore troubles. He's saying he's seen a lot of bad things in the future. He's okay. And he's also saying the one who has showed me these things shall quicken me again. You guys know what the word quicken means? That's right. It will make him alive again. Shall quicken me again and shall bring me up 
from the depths of the earth. Why is he in the depths of the earth? Because he's dead. Now right here, if you're reading it like the way I'm reading it, it's saying Yahweh is going to bring him back to life. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Now right there, that agrees exactly to what Yahweh said. He's going to raise him up to us. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 28 and 4. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 4. I'll begin reading. <clears throat> How be it Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. There's that word again. Forever. That means there is, how is there another king of kings? We only have one true king and then there is one king under him. So where does this other king of kings come from who the whole world, including most of our families, are celebrating today? He's not in Yahweh's literature. For he hath chosen, sorry, let me back up a little bit, the king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler of the house of Israel, of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father. He, like, he liked me to make me king over all of Israel. Okay, so the biggest thing I'm pulling from there he used that word again, that forever. Okay, so what that means is, the way I read that, he was here, he died, that wouldn't be forever. So in keeping with the scriptures, that means, like, like the word of the prophets, he will return and he will be our king forever. I'm going to jump to uh, Psalm 16 and 10. And I've got quite a few more, but I'm going to just, just hit a, key, a few key ones. This will be the last one, actually. And um, I'll finish off. But again, this is David agreeing with the prophets who came long after he was dead. All right, 16 and 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now, keeping in mind, those of you watching via the internet who are still on the fence, your book says that David saw corruption. Here, in the Creator's book, it says David will not see corruption. So you have to choose this day who your master is, who you will listen to, who words you will follow. And this is something you should take into consideration on this day and think about everything you're doing, everything that was mentioned earlier, because this is the creator's Sabbath day. And when you do things like deliberately get up on his day to cook abominable foods, to wear clothing of mixed linens, to celebrate in a lie of worship and give all your praise to an idol, you are not verbally saying it, but you are physically saying that you hate the creator and that you hate his law and that you choose to do elsewise. This is just something that you should look at. And I want to thank Yahweh for allowing me to get a chance to uh, speak on his holy day. I just want to say he is the only one. Yahweh is one. He is our Elohim. There is none else. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.